thing that should appear is the serial number for the airbag control unit. To continue the program, we push the arrow button, and now we can select a function. To read the fault memory, we we'll want to select function 0, 2, and again, enter it by pressing the Q button. The contents of the fault memory will now be displayed by pushing the arrow button. Each fault can be displayed by continuing to push the arrow button until the select function XX display is shown. Now if you would like the contents of the fault memory printed, simply push the print button and repeat the procedure and the contents of the memory will now be printed out. Once any faults that have been found are repaired, you should then erase the fault memory. This is the only way that you can turn out the warning light. Now to erase the fault memory, we'll want to select function 0, 5, enter it with the Q button, and the fault memory will then be erased. The system warning light in the instrument cluster will then go out. Before working on cabriolets equipped with a driver's side airbag, there are a few precautions that you must follow. Before working on any components of the system or removing the steering wheel, you must disconnect the battery ground strap and wait 20 minutes. This 20 minutes is to allow the energy reserves capacitor in the control unit to discharge. It's merely a precaution to prevent an accidental activation of the airbag. Next, before removing the steering wheel or the spiral spring, make sure that the front wheels are in the straight ahead position. Before removing the steering wheel, you'll have to remove the two Torx head screws at the back of the steering wheel to take the airbag unit out. Once both Torx head screws have been completely loosened, you can take the airbag unit and tilt it back. Now disconnect the red connector from the back of the gas generator and we can now store the airbag unit. I never store the airbag unit with the gas generator facing up. Always store the airbag unit with this vinyl pad facing up. Before you remove the steering wheel, it's a good idea to mark the position of the wheel in relation to its position of the steering column shaft. To do this, you can use a hammer and a punch. Now the steering wheel can be removed. While you're taking it off, be careful to guide the wire from the spiral spring through the opening in the steering wheel. Now the spiral spring stays attached to the top of the steering column stock switches. If the spiral spring is removed for any reason, there are a couple of things you want to check when you reinstall it. First, check to make sure that the wires from the spring assembly are routed correctly over the top of the steering column stock switches. Check carefully to make sure that they are not pinched. Next, we'll want to make sure that the spiral spring is in its center position. To do this, rotate